Good afternoon and welcome to Arkansas Children's. I'm Rebecca Brockman and this afternoon I'm joined by Dr. Ashay Patel and he is in our urology clinic, urology department here at Arkansas Children's. Although he just informed me before we started taping that they see patients all over at Arkansas Children's Northwest and at our Jonesboro Clinic. So you are championing children um, who have your, your urology uh, problems um, all across the state. So Thank you for what you do and welcome to our Facebook Live remote. Awesome, thank you for having me today. Look forward to contributing to uh, the education here. So tell before we dive into the questions, uh, this afternoon we are gonna be talking about urinary tract infections or UTIs as most people know them by. Uh, we are gonna talk about what causes them, if they can be prevented, and most importantly, how they are treated. Uh, but Dr. Patel, before we dive in, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Arkansas Children's. Great, um, I've been at Children's for the past uh, 10 years in August. Um, and I would say what brought me to Children's here in Arkansas was the ability to reach um, the kids here in Arkansas, provide um, excellent health care at the time when, we, when I joined. Uh, there was one pediatric urologist and now there's three of us. Uh, we really focus on central Arkansas and now we've reached all across um, the entire state to provide care to all the kids here in Arkansas. And um, so far we've enjoyed it. Uh, no complaints and we continue to look forward to the many years ahead of us. So I think most adults have heard about UTIs, either they've had one or a family member. So I, I feel like you hear about it a lot in the adult population, but let's talk about uh, UTIs in children. And first of all, just what a UTI is and how common they are in children. Okay, great. Uh, so a urinary tract infection is a very broad term that we would use in urology. So when we break it down to urinary tract infection, you have a bladder infection, and then you can have a kidney infection. So bladder infection, also known as like cystitis, or some commonly people call those urinary tract infections. And then the kidney infection is what we would call a pyelonephritis, and that's when the, the patient, the kid, would get really sick. Um, naturally, our urine is sterile, or there's, there's no bacteria that our body produces that causes the infection. So all these problems occur when bacteria enter from the outside in through the urethra and into the bladder and then cause a, a, an infection. And are they fairly common in children? And if so, what ages? So it, it, it ranges depending, it, it, the, the gender changes based on the age. Um, the circumcised, circumcised status also affects uh, based on the age. So We'll just talk about boys initially. In general, more common in Caucasians than African Americans on all age groups. And in boys who are circumcised, the risk of urinary tract infection is extremely low, especially after the first year of life. In boys who are uncircumcised, there, there is the highest incidence of urinary tract tract infections in the first three months, but up to a year, there's a high risk of urinary tract infections compared to females. After the first year of life, that, that's when the gender differences take effect, where you have a higher incidence in females than in, in boys, just because of some of the changes that happen with the anatomy. Uh, but then less than two years or less in potty training, you know, most of those kids present with kidney infections because they can't verbalize to us if they have pain with urination or we see any urgency or frequency with urination because they're peeing in a diaper. So kids who aren't potty trained typically present with kidney infections, not bladder infections. It's the school age kids or kids that are older, two, three, five, toilet trained kids that typically present with bladder infections. Um, and that's another age group that we see for recurrent urinary tract infections. So how, so for parents and caregivers who are watching, how do they know if their child has a UTI? What are some symptoms that they should be watching for? So I would say we would break it down into the two different age groups. Those kids who are not toilet trained, so less than two, their presenting symptom is typically fever. So greater than 104, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Uh, they may be lethargic. They may not be eating as much. They may be just lying around. They may have some uh, vomiting. Uh, so those are typically the symptoms we see in the younger age group. In the older age group, greater than two, you know, they're going to have, they may have some new incontinence, a new wetting of their underwear. They may have some new bed wetting. They may say it hurts to void or to pee. Uh, in some instances, you may see some blood in the urine. Uh, so those are the typical symptoms that we see based on the age group, regardless of gender. Dr. Patel, should a parent or caregiver take their child to a pediatrician for treatment? What are the best steps to take? So in yes, they should go take their child to go see the pediatrician. That's that's the best part, the best place to start first. Um, based on the symptoms that we just described, um, the pediatrician should look at the child and we'll look at the child and make sure that there's no other causes for if they have a fever, if they have a respiratory infection, if they have a runny nose, if they have a cough, that may be the source of fever. Although in a small percentage of kids, you can also have a urinary tract infection in addition to a respiratory infection or an ear infection. So sometimes evaluating the urinary tract is important. And in, in a similar fashion, taking them when the kid is older and they have those no complaints, then yeah, they, they need to have their urine checked through the pediatrician. Is there ever a case where a UTI can be treated at home or does it always need medical attention? A bladder and or kidney infection is not going to go away on its own. It's going to need some sort of medical attention, specifically an antibiotic, if there is a bacteria that is found. So when the patient goes to see the doctor or the, the doctor or the pediatrician, then we need to collect a urine and we need to perform two tests at least. We need to perform a urinalysis and the urinalysis is often the quick test in the office where it will show if there is any inflammation or white cells. It may show something called nitrites, which we see in certain bacteria. There may be some blood. Based on that test, then the urine should always be sent for a urine culture. We, the reason we want the urine culture is it could tell us one, what bacteria is there, how much bacteria is there, because that will vary. And more importantly, it will tell us what is the correct antibiotic that we give to that child. Sometimes we do have kids whose parents will tell us that they get on one antibiotic and then a second antibiotic and the third antibiotic. And unfortunately they're not on, there was never a culture done. So we're just treating it kind of blindly without the right information. So if a child gets a lot of reoccurring or recurrent UTIs, are there any long-term effects or anything long-term for the child? So if a, if a child has recurring bladder infections, again, those are infections without fever. Those are just, you know, pain with urination, some new incontinence. There really isn't any long-term effects in kids who've had just bladder infections. In kids who've had recurring kidney infections, then we worry about chances of damage to the kidney. And typically, if we can treat the kid with antibiotics within 24 and at most 48 hours of when the fever starts, that will help reduce the chance of having any kind of damage to the kidneys. And I, I know as a mom myself and other parents who are watching, they're curious if UTIs can be prevented. Is there anything that children can drink or eat or not eat and drink that can prevent UTIs? Okay, so um, the best thing to prevent urinary tract infection um, actually is how well, you know, hygiene um, in the uncircumcised boy or in a child that's not toilet trained is making sure the hygiene is good. Um, even in kids that are toilet trained, hygiene becomes a big component of how, how we're cleaning after we pee or void or after we have a bowel movement. Because what happens in the five, six, seven year old child, um, especially females, they may wipe the wrong way. And something as simple as wiping the correct way and performing good hygiene will help prevent urinary tract infections. In terms of diet, there's no food that was going to prevent urinary tract infections. Cranberry juice 
in multiple studies has shown that it doesn't prevent urinary tract infections. It doesn't treat urinary tract infections. Um, the best thing to drink to help prevent urinary tract infections actually is just water. Lots of water, good hydration, and more importantly is making sure we have good bowel function. All these bacteria that cause these infections really come from the, uh, the bowel. So the most common bacteria is E. coli, which is a bacteria that we find in our bowel. So if, there, if we can manage any kind of underlying constipation uh, or infrequent bowel movements or large bowel movements or any stool accidents, that will help reduce a significant number of kids who have recurring urinary tract infections. This, uh, Dr. Patel, this is all such valuable information. I know for parents and caregivers who are watching who their child might have UTIs, when do you suggest that they see a specialist and how do they make uh, an appointment at the, uro the urology clinic at Arkansas Children's? Uh, so great question. Um, in terms of make, um, when they need to see us, uh, you know, if a child's had one bladder infection then, or two bladder infections, that can be managed through the pediatrician's office or the family doc. You know, when they've had three or four, you know, three infections in the last six months or four infections in a year, then they definitely need to see us. Um, in the kids that's had kidney infections, the younger kids, they probably will need to see us sooner because those sometimes are associated with um, issues on the inside with their kidneys or bladder. So we do some other imaging studies like an ultrasound, a very painless test that we do for kids who've had kidney infections. Um, so then we need to see those kids sooner. In regards to how do we get, how do you get into the urology clinic, right? So majority is done through the, the primary care and the primary care physicians like to know when their patients are going to see which other specialists. So usually referral is done. Um, sometimes we can just call 501-364-4000 and that's the number for the hospital. And if you say, urology, then they'll put you in touch with our urology schedulers, and then you will get an appointment to either see one of the physicians or also one of our nurse practitioners. Our nurse practitioners see a majority of our kids who have, you know, urinary tract infections because a lot of it is dealing with voiding and um, bowel movements, and so they spend a lot of time teaching, and they do a great job supporting the physicians in our clinic. Well, Dr. Patel, we appreciate your time and insight into UTIs this afternoon. If you do have a question for Dr. Patel, please leave it in the comment section below and we'll make sure that he sees it. Um, in the meantime, uh, or before we close, do you have any other uh, thoughts or suggestions or tips, advice for parents who are watching? Yeah, I would say that parents sometimes can see us and they're frustrated that there isn't easy solutions. and. And often, you know, the education that we give is to help their child get better. And it does take work. Um, there's no easy magic pill, um, but we're happy to help provide the education. Uh, we do need the parents' help to help their kids get better. Um, but we are concerned about your child. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We're happy to help. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Patel. In the meantime, we hope you and your family are staying healthy and happy, uh, washing your hands and uh, just staying healthy during this time. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.